I'm Ben Fogel, and over the next few weeks, I'm going to live with different people who inhabit some of the most remote locations on Earth. What, what was that? Something just touched my foot. <laughs> From the foothills of the Himalayas to the jungle islands of the Philippines, the humid Georgian swamplands, and the tropics of Panama. Who are the people who have the guts to escape forever? You can't break free from the mainstream. Is it daring or just downright crazy? It's a lie! <laughs> I mean, I'm unsuitable. I can't live in an organized society. I want to discover the reality behind giving up the rat race. Oh, oh I smell colder. <laughs> As I find out why people build new lives in the wild. It's quite a jacuzzi, isn't it? Today, I'm traveling to Georgia in the southeast of the USA. Thousands of acres of alligator-infested wetlands sprawl across this huge state. I'm heading into the depths of this wilderness to live with Colbert, a man who quit a high-flying career in life in the city to make his home in a blackwater swamp. Here, I'll discover why Colbert left behind a high-pressure job and the luxuries of modern life to live a primitive existence. Oh, I smell colder. And how he survives by living off the creatures that inhabit this dank, humid, and dangerous backwater. My 4,000 mile journey takes me from London to Atlanta in the United States. From there, I drive three hours into the country's deep south towards the swamplands of southern Georgia. Colbert doesn't want to reveal his exact location to keep his privacy undisturbed. So I'm literally driving off the map. All I know is I have to pick up a dirt track and head into the woods. Restricted area. Swamp. There's a post box that says swamp. As I drive further, the trees start to close in. When I think of swamps, I think of mangrove trees, alligators, mosquitoes, catfish, leeches. The immigration official at the airport warned me that this is where loads of bodies are dumped, which I thought was rather cheery. The only way to get to Colbert's place in the heart of the swamp is by water. This is where the road ends. Hello. There's a canoe. This is a very, very strange beginning. Colbert has left me this canoe and instructions to make my own way upstream. I'm assuming it's this way. That would be the rain. You know what, I haven't even met him. I'm already wondering why on earth he would choose to live in this. Tropical storms are common here. The temperature often hits 40 degrees, with humidity climbing to a clammy 95%. This is one of the biggest swamps in North America, and it covers hundreds of square miles. In this untamed wilderness, there are no houses, and lots of the area remains unexplored. I've been paddling against the current for over an hour. Hope I'm getting close. I can see something up ahead. I don't know if that is something man-made. Hey! Hey! I'm glad I came to the right place. There's not many places just like this place, anywhere near this place. You must be Colbert? Sometimes. <laughs> Hi, Colbert. I'm Ben. What a place. I'm assuming I'm starting as I'm going to finish wet. Oh, you have to you get used to it. Well, your skin's waterproof, your clothes are not. So it depends on the company and the activity at hand. I frequently don't wear a whole lot. <laughs> You're welcome to wear some clothes while I'm around uh, Colbert. <laughs> can, I, can I have a look around? Sure. I'm dying to see the place. 64-year-old Colbert used to work as a financial planner for American Express. He was earning a huge $10,000 a month. That's 6,000 pounds. He had a huge house, just 10 miles away from his current location, 
which he shared with his wife and two grown-up daughters. But Colbert no longer wanted the stress of his high-pressured lifestyle. He was determined to live without financial ties. Around the same time, his marriage broke down. So he decided to sell everything. Colbert toured the country looking for the perfect spot to settle in. What he didn't realize was that his dream location was in his home state of Georgia. After years of searching, he decided to buy a plot of land here in the swamp. While he camped out on the swamp floor, he slowly built himself a cabin on the river. And he's lived here ever since. Wow, so I'm assuming this was all hand-built, Colbert. Oh, yes, absolutely. From materials here, or did you have to bring them in? Materials I found up and down the swamp for miles and miles. It took me years just to gather the materials. Wow, look at this. The money Colbert saved from his career in finance bought the land here. He paid $20,000 for it. As the wood is salvaged, it cost next to nothing to build. Wow, this is like a film set. It's like the perfect <laughs> wooden cabin. Look at this, it's full of... It's all handmade with hand tools. Wow. Living in the swamp, Colbert needs boats to get around. But out here, he isn't connected to utilities, though he does keep a couple of gas cylinders for cooking. No power here? No power. Nothing at all? No electricity at all? No electricity. No electric bill. Wow. Imagine that. So if you've got uh, running water? You just paddled in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it I, I feel a bit stupid asking that question, but as in there's no taps, I can't turn on the water. No. If you have a plumbing, you'll have a plumbing problem. Then you'll have a plumbing bill. So nothing at all? Oh, you'll love it. Without bills, Colbert ekes out his savings, which he budgets to a couple of hundred dollars a month. He has a truck for occasional food runs, but without a fridge, he buys goods he can store. Anything else he needs, the swamp has to provide. How do you describe yourself to people? I'm an opportunivore. An opportunivore, I like right. that. I eat plants and animals and anything I can catch. Oh, anything that doesn't eat me first, I'll, I'll eat it. Right behind you is a deer that I shot about a year ago. Where? And I canned it and put it in oh, a container. It, right? uh, and this is ready whenever you need it. Wow. There's a date on it when I shot it. Yeah, uh, 0210. 10, so it's three years old. So it's three-year-old deer meat. And up above that, it's probably beaver. Beaver? Oh, yes. I, wow. I trap in the wintertime. Uh, so beaver, deer, what, what other sort of meat might you eat here? Well, the, the meat I like the best is beaver, and deer, and raccoon, uh, opossum. And uh, being an opportunity for occasionally if another animal comes my way by some safe means, I'll eat it too. Colbert's former house was plush and spacious worth $750,000 today. His home now has just two rooms, a loft which is Colbert's bedroom. Oh, wow. I like what you've done. Plenty of space. And probably nice and warm in the winter. Oh, very nice, very cozy. And this kitchen with a pull-down bunk that I'll be sleeping on. The facilities here are pretty basic. There's one little cabin. There's no running water, so, you know, everything from um, the water you drink, to the water you cook with, to the water you wash with, is behind me. You know, it's the swamp. Um, there's no loo, or even a, a there's not even a, an area to use as a loo. He just said he just digs a little hole in various spots and puts some twigs and leaves on it. So, quite honestly, I could be sitting on a pile of his SHIT right now. <laughs> It's dinner time, so we head into Colbert's larder, the swamp. Colbert survives here by fishing or hunting every day. He has lines rigged up along the river, and it looks like we've caught something. But some little critters got the fish before us. Oh, wow. Hmm. Looks like the guts are gone, and uh, we're here just in time to get the tasty part of this fish. See, I'm instantly thinking alligator. Well. A lot of things get blamed on the alligator that they didn't do. Yeah. But uh, what people don't usually give credit for being a predator is the turtles. Right. So we just have to establish how old this is as to whether that's still edit whether the meat is still okay or not. Right. Is it okay, you think? Yeah. It's still okay. It's actually kind of half the cleaning is done for us. 
there you go. <laughs> Half the cleaning is already done. Aren't we lucky? Quite a good way to uh, come back from the supermarket. Well, that's what we did. We just went shopping. We've caught ourselves a mudfish, which makes it sound about as appetizing as it looks. You've got no electricity here, so there's no freezer. So you can't keep anything for very long unless you've dried it or pickled it. Is that right? Have you ever seen a coyote with a freezer? No. All right. Have you ever seen any wild animal with a freezer? <laughs> what do they do when they get but something you, to eat? They eat it right now. But you could argue, yeah, listen, I'm going to give you my smart aleck answer, though, but that's okay. human evolution is that we have made it more efficient to keep things for longer by having... And I, when I say a freezer, I don't mean... Because there are people that... Preserving have, methods. Yeah, yeah, preserving yeah. methods. There you go. Well, the problem with that is eventually you have food like apples yeah. that are a year old. Yeah. And even though they're not rotting yet, I think they like nutrition. Yeah. When you eat things fresh, I think they have more nutrition. Isn't that beautiful? Still smells a bit off, <laughs> to be honest. Well, you're, you're, <clears throat> I've eaten worse. To get cleaned up, we go down to the river. If you've got a little smell on your fingers, you want yeah. to eliminate that? Rub your fingers in the soil, the dirt, oh, yeah. the sand. So that's then, my soap? That's the soap, and then rinse that off. Mud soap. You're a bit thirsty, you can have a drink too. Wow, is it really? Is that really good enough to drink? I've been drinking it. I've been drinking it like this since the 80s. Look at me. It might be the fountain of youth that we'd uh, overlooked. When he puts it like that, maybe I will try the swamp water tomorrow. We should open up a restaurant maybe and call it uh, oh. Mudfish Nuggets. <laughs> Fed some turtle, feeding us. What more could you ask for? That's a circle of life in the swamp. I think the turtle got the, the fresh, <laughs> the fresher part. I'm in Colbert's cabin now, next to the little uh, paraffin lamp. Let's just have a little look at his collection of books. We've got Orgasm, just above Granny's Recipes and Remedies, above the Encyclopedia of Unusual Sex Practices. Oh, and not forgetting this little nice little one on the very top there. Coming up next, I make some swamp coffee. My instruction was just to make sure there's not too many sticks in it. We go frog hunting in the bush. Okay, I see one. Close, Colbert. And I quiz Colbert about his love life. So is that almost one of your biggest luxuries out here, orgasms? <laughs> It's my first morning in southern Georgia. I'm in the middle of a swamp, in the hand-built wooden cabin of my host, Colbert, a man who went from city fat cat earning big bucks in the world of finance to jungle Tarzan. Colbert lives here alone, without running water, a toilet, nor electricity. I'm up early, as it's already 35 degrees and the humidity is stifling. Oh, good morning. I think if I brush my teeth in this river water, it will actually make them dirtier. Oh, do I look tired? It is a pretty extraordinary life that he lives here. You know, he's in his mid-60s, so it's unbelievably impressive that he lives here alone, having done all this physical work himself. I mean, that is incredible. He looks like a 50-year-old, really. 40-year-old sometimes. My instinct on my first morning is that I don't think I could do this. There's morning coffee to be made, and without running water, there's only one place to fill the kettle. My instruction was just to make sure there's not too many sticks in it. So there we go. That's our drinking water. And it's... It smells... It smells like mud. 
Colbert has a limited supply of gas hooked up to a small hob. As it's my first morning, he's treating me to a stove-cooked breakfast that he's bought specially. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Delicious. Definitely a earthy, muddy <laughs> sort of... It tastes alive. I don't think it is. Maybe my taste buds needs to change. I'm trying to be polite. It's disgusting. Well, if it's a bit strong, you can weaken it up by adding more water. No, no I don't need any more water in this. I think that's the, I think that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know more about this unconventional man who journeyed deep into the woods and why he chose to build a new life away from the city here in this hot, humid, and seemingly uninviting swamp. I knew I wanted a higher quality of life, so I, I knew I had to make a transition, and I searched, say, where am I the most happy? And what I did is I went back to my childhood when I was a young teenager before I was old enough to drive, and I said, when was I happy, happiest? And it was when I was in the forest, living in my treehouse that I built, playing in the woods. So I determined that I would create a lifestyle, buy some land, create a lifestyle where I was a kid playing in the woods. So now I'm basically an old teenager playing in the woods, building tree houses, swimming naked, fishing, having a blast. And when I have friends that don't have to work, I invite them out to play. And do you think it was that decision to totally change your life that affected your marriage? Well, that's one of the factors. Uh, marriage is a complicated subject. We could read all the books about it and I could write you a new one, but uh, marriages change. No matter how perfect they are, as time goes by, marriages change and relationship changes. It's just one issue. I didn't really, I shouldn't say this, but I didn't really want to be married because married, marriage uh, takes away some of your freedom. There's lots of benefits and it's a good thing, but it limits your freedom. And I decided if I was going to be free, I was going to uh, not be married and not have a job and be totally free. Colbert often makes trips deep into the wetlands around him to explore and see what other resources the swamp can offer. And he's taking me out on one of these adventures to spend the night in the bush. The plan, by the way, is there is no plan. <laughs> we're, uh, we're just walking. So just follow me and trust me. Have you ever been lost? Oh yeah, you're never gonna have any fun if you're not lost. Um, you stay on the beaten path, stay on the four lane, no fun. Colbert loves life out here, but I'm finding it overwhelming as the humidity climbs to 90%. And although they're not deadly, there are creepy crawlies everywhere. Oh, it's a biggie. Here, if you just come this way a little bit, it's just uh... Oh yeah, that's that's an adult. Bye, buddy. Can eat some mosquitoes, please. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I'm cool with spiders. Cool with spiders. Finally, we pick a place to camp for the night, and to ward off mosquitoes, we try to get a fire going. Put your pile over there, a little bit away from oh, mine. You, oh, you yes. don't want to contaminate your pile? With no need pile. contaminating them. Okay. Oh, this is a competition. Aha! <laughs> is this is a competition. <laughs> well, later on you might be in the forest making a fire by yourself, and I'm not there to help you, so I may as well share a few good ideas that I've learned over the years. But Colbert still relies on matches bought from the supermarket as he teaches me about life in the wild. So, a lot of things tend to be a bit wet. It looks like it might be kind of time to just call that a learning experience. Uh, you don't get two matches. Oh, I don't get two matches? No, no, no. That's, okay. that's not part of the rules. Uh... I forgot to tell you the rules, but, yeah. One I, match, I one put it, match. I put it out, it's your turn again. <laughs> Isn't this fun? <laughs> Come on. 
But it's your turn. No, I, I, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm very happy. I leave Colbert to get the fire going as I get to work on our sleeping arrangements. When Colbert camps out, he always builds a bed and, of course, he takes the opportunity to give me another life lesson. Okay, it's time to start putting the leaves on it. Let me show you technique together a lot in a little bit of time. <laughs> Colbert, you look like a dog. I got my feet, I got my hole, I got my rake, and I'm ready to go. You're a bit slow. I see worse beds and fancier places. And I'll guarantee you no one slipped on that before. It's a brand new bed. Give it a try. All right, move over yeah. a bit. Yeah, I'll move right. over much more. Oh. I'll end up spooning you, Colbert. I think you're my wife. Well, I'll wake you I up. I haven't shared a bed with anyone else for well, many, many years. If you feel that, that means <laughs> quit doing whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be quite cozy. Colbert reckons our one chance for an evening meal tonight is to catch some frogs. Apparently, they're easier to hunt at night. So while we wait for dark, I have time for a question that's playing on my mind. Well, I, know, I noticed in your, in your not huge, vast library uh -huh. out in the swamp, quite a few books about female orgasm. Is that an interest of yours? Is that a hobby, another hobby? Interest. Well, let me give you a quick summary with no detail right now, but my experience has been with multiple women in a romantic activity. Women don't come prepared for the full benefit of the sensual pleasure possible in a male-female relationship. They have shitty orgasms. Uh, I've coached many women from their level of sexual pleasure all the way to orgasms to a level that literally I had to counsel their brain because they were in shock of the great deal of pleasure that was possible. <laughs> so is that almost one of your biggest luxuries out here, orgasms? <laughs> <laughs> this is where the conversation well, went, Cole, but I've never had a conversation around a campfire quite like this before. Is the first. Well, most men, by the way, are lousy lovers. Mm -hmm. They don't give the female the time. I'm a very good lover. How do you know? <laughs> uh huh, yeah, see? How do you know? Oh, most dear. of the women, perhaps the women have just been too kind to give you frogs? feedback. Can I hear the frogs? Uh huh, see? You're the very aren't you? Uh huh. Have you seen what this conversation's done to my, my body temperature? Look at my, look at my sweat. I know. But Let I, me I'm... ask you a question. You don't have to answer this, mm. but your normal sexual activity is it more or less than an hour? <laughs> see? <laughs> what do you mean, see? Most of my friends, their sexual activity is less than 20 minutes. And it's much more than that. And that's terrible. Yeah. That's like driving through and getting that's a burger and swallowing it whole and only chewing it once. <clears throat> that's not me. There's places for that there? Well, there's places for it. There's times when that's not needs, what needs done. <laughs> cold, but cold. How many times have you had more than 12 hours nonstop? <laughs> so many times I can't actually count on. Okay. On my hands. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of teasing you a little bit and joking a little bit, so don't take everything I said seriously. <laughs> I'm trying to stimulate your response, and it looks yeah. like it's working pretty well. Slightly stunned by our conversation, I'm left wondering how much of Colbert's stories are fact or fiction. But it's time to go hunting for some frogs. to shine a light up and down, try and see the reflection in their eyes. Um, and then basically stab them with the, the frog spear. You shine your light out into the swamp like this. Mm -hmm. If you see something that looks like a couple of red marbles mm -hmm. that glow in the dark, yep, that would be an alligator. There are real wild dangers out here. And all for a meal we might never catch. All for one frog. What's this with always thinking about your belly? You one of those people like to eat three meals a day on time? <laughs> <laughs> when possible. Okay, I see one. He's kind of small, but he's, he'll still eat. Let me try to get the first one. Yeah. Uh, that way if I mess up, uh, and you do too, you won't feel so bad. Get a bit closer. Close, Colbert. Very close. Mm. A 
got one. Did you catch it with the spear, Colbert? Yes, got him with the spear. Well done. It's not very big. Now, what I do, I not only eat the legs, but I eat the front legs, I eat the belly, uh -huh. and the back. Basically, everything but the intestines. Uh -huh. The whole bit said this is all edible, this bit. Right. Thank you, Mother Nature, for providing all of our needs. It sort of tastes like fishy chicken, chickeny fish. Chickeny fish, huh? Do you think? Do you have a description of it? Yes, I've got a real good description. It tastes like fresh frog. Fresh frog. <laughs> <laughs> One small little frog doesn't go far, but I'm grateful not to go hungry tonight. Mm. Sorry, frog. Coming up, I get to work on a secret hideout. Wow, Colbert, that is something. I like a challenge. And we harvest some roadkill. Oh, the smell. I'm in America's deep south, in a dark swamp miles from anywhere. It's a tough life for hunter-gatherer Colbert, who usually lives alone out here in a small cabin. He's taken me into the depths of the bush where we've spent the night sleeping on the forest floor. Amazing noises, though. Yeah, amazing noises all night. Like different types of animals and different noises all night. I think mosquitoes are waking up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like they wake up and they, they smell the fresh meat here. Mm, that would be me. This camping experience has allowed me to learn more about Colbert. If he's to be believed, he's very successful with the ladies, who he claims visit him out here in the swamp. When I came out here, I had no idea I was coming out with some sort of sex guru. Well, what's hilarious about Colbus is that he's brilliant at everything. <laughs> and uh, and, and it, it's almost that he has this, um, this air of superiority about everything that he does. So just follow me and trust me. And what's hilarious is that that goes into sex as well, the female orgasm. Before we head back to the cabin, Colbert wants to show me a project he's been working on. I can see something up ahead, Colbert. What's it look like so far? It looks very cool from here. I can't quite make out the design. Wow, Colbert, that is something. That is truly astonishing. How did you get those, those timbers? That's got to weigh hundreds of kilograms, hundreds of pounds. It did. I filmed the long one there in the bottom of the river, and it took me two years to get it out and get it up to where I could move it. With no machinery. I like a bit of a challenge. I like a challenge. Colbert is setting me to work on some loose boards that need securing. What would a smart man do? A smart man would position it like this so he'd only have to cut one instead of two. And I seem to have taken on the role of blundering apprentice. There you go. You're, you're figuring it out. <laughs> is that, a, is that a, a laugh of, I'm happy, or? That's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Colba, every time. I see a lot of amateurs do that, that method. His heckling aside, I'm in awe of Colbert's skill and determination to build this huge structure by hand in the middle of nowhere. But who's it for? But I, I always equate tree houses with kids. Obviously, I'd love a tree house of my own, but do, do kids actually ever come here? Do, do, do children enjoy this? Well, I'm still a kid. <laughs> Very A lot of experience, but mm -hmm. I'm still a kid. Um, but my grandkids come here and they're just totally fascinated with it because they're going to grandpa's to come to play in his treehouse, his bridge, and some of the other things you've seen that I built. And I built this thing to last long enough to see my great grandkids also enjoy it. Say, grandpa, how'd you build that? And then I'll start showing them tricks and techniques of construction and building and thinking, and that'll be a way to educate my great grandchildren. So, how old are your grandchildren? The oldest is 18, the youngest is 12. They had a chance to go to the amusement park with the rides and roller coasters, but they chose to come here instead last summer. After all that hard work, we head back to Colbert's, and it's time for a warm beer, one of his few store-bought luxuries. 
Cheers. Cheers. So is this your is this your kind of sundowner place to come and finish the day? It's a beautiful spot to do whatever needs done. And the things I typically do is watch the sunrise, watch the sunset. Uh, sometimes hang out here with a friend, drink a few beers. And we won't go into detail what activities we get involved in, but it's all fun and playful. <laughs> And you have to elaborate. You, ha to you have to. You have to elaborate. Uh, we have a lot of naked parties with friendly females. We do a lot of swimming, getting some sun, uh, partying, playing in the water, eating fish, etc. Naked parties. Of course. Before I get a chance to hear more, we're interrupted by Colbert's neighbour Mike, who owns a hunting cabin downriver. Hey, how are y'all doing? Yeah, good. Come, come up here. It's uh... okay. You got enough room? Yeah, come on up. Room. Okay. Come, come so this is a really fortuitous. I get to ask a neighbour. How do you describe? How would you describe Colbert? He is. He is different. He's a one of a kind. That's for sure. <laughs> what do you mean by that? He's a one of a kind guy. And he is a good friend. That's for sure. He's got a heart of gold. And he can fix anything you need or whatever, and don't even need no battery-operated drill. How would you describe his lifestyle? Primitive. Primitive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever been to one of Colbert's there. parties? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was yep. just sharing with him this winter when I had a couple of lady friends yeah. up here. Um, what was their name? Kendall and... And Lily. Kendall and Lily, yep. <laughs> Young ladies in the I place. had a video. They was out here singing, having a good time. <laughs> we was too. Anyway, Kendall and Lily was up here start naked <laughs> up here yeah right here saying y'all come on up <laughs> <laughs> they all seem to have loads of sex around here that's basically what i've discovered it's almost like there's two sides to colbert there's this kind of survivalist who loves telling me off and and, and doing everything right and showing off and then there's he's obviously got this sort of sexual side. <laughs> I want to do Barry White. <laughs> He's obviously quite the lover. They all are. All the, everyone, obviously, women out here love swampy men. It's the next morning, and we're journeying out of the swamp. Colbert's two grandsons are coming to visit, and we're off to collect them. Colbert's main expense is this old truck, which he uses to make essential trips into town so that he can restock his supplies. Today, we're using it to drive to the airport. And along the way, Colbert spots something he thinks might be useful. Ah, nice, Colbert. You've, uh, you've stopped for a dead animal, a raccoon, presumably. I eat a lot of raccoon. Oh, it's got a whiff, though. If the meat's edible, Colbert needs to gut the raccoon quickly so that it doesn't spoil in the heat. We'll hang the cord around this tree branch. What cord? Your shoelace. Do you really want my lace? The nice These are thing my new about shoes. Living spontaneously, especially for this trip. You have to be good at improvising. Oh, the smell! Oh, the smell of that. That's pretty bad. A nice trick of being living in the wild is looking at everything as a tool. Mm -hmm. That'll work quite nicely. Do you look at me? Do you look at me as a tool? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, and I'll show you how to hang it up and process it quickly. That smell is pretty special. It's not your favorite smell, I think. No, not really. This is definitely a survival food, and people not experienced with this shouldn't eat meat at this stage of decay. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't necessarily recommend this for me. No, I wouldn't recommend it for you. But what I would do is boil it until it totally disintegrates, and mm -hmm. that will kill all the first stages of decaying bacteria mm -hmm. and unknown other entities, um, and then eat it as a soup. Uh, and it'll be quite nice. Although the meat's too rotten for me to eat, Colbert doesn't let the carcass go to waste. Raccoon fur is worth money, and he can get up to $35 for one pelt, enough to keep him in beer for a few weeks. We're gonna stick our hand in there and turn it wrong side out like a sock and put the fur out and flip the wrong side out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we have now is a nice prime uh, pelt. Now, would you like your uh, shoelace back? <laughs> I kind of want to say no, but I'm not going to get very far with my shoe like this, so I need it back. Yeah, please. All right, we'll save it. 
Colbert's grandsons have made the two-hour plane journey from Virginia. They haven't visited since their last school holiday. Grandpa! Oh, how you doing, Grandpa? Glad you guys can make it. Yeah. I keep <laughs> getting shorter hey, and shorter. Hey, I'm this Devin. Is Devin, nice to meet you. I'm Ben. Hey, hey Ben. I'm Cody. Cody. This is yes. Cody. Happy to see your Grandpa? Yes. yes. Yeah, we haven't cool. seen him in a while. Yeah. No sense of spring. Has he changed? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Did you bring your you truck? You packed light. Oh yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. All we brought was our Tight. swimming suits. Yeah, that's yeah. all you need down there. And if you got the right girl, you don't need that. <laughs> oh god, that's <laughs> later. Oh god, oh grandpa. Coming up next, it's shooting practice, and I show Colbert how it's done. I'd say that was a that direct was a hit. hit. That was a hit. I, wow. That was a hit. Don't look so surprised. And take a dip in dangerous waters. What, what was that? Over the last week, I've been living with Colbert, a man who gave up the comforts of the city to build a new life in the swamplands of Georgia. We've made the long paddle downriver to collect Colbert's grandsons, 18-year-old Devin and 16-year-old Cody, who've come to visit for the day. He always says we can bring our girlfriends down. Oh, really? Time. When they get bigger, they're going to go to the tree house for bed and breakfast with the girlfriends. And I'll wait here for them till they get done. <laughs> breakfast. Get done. <laughs> I mean, get up. What did I say? Get done. <laughs> I'm keen to get to know the boys who've traveled here to spend time with their grandfather. So, Cody, have you been coming here since you were very young? Uh, very, very young. I think first time was... It would have to be... Eight years old, I think. Yeah? Yeah. And have you always loved it? Is I've this, always, is this I've like always, paradise? It's, it's my paradise, yeah. You seem a little bit squeamish about the spiders and things. You're city boys. You're, you're, oh, we, you're, are you're, we are definitely city boys, but... I'm just terrified of spiders. He's terrified of spiders, spiders. Dead, like, terrified. And what, are you, and what are you terrified of here? Is there anything? Snapping turtles. Snapping turtles. More yeah. than alligators? Yeah. Why? But surely an alligator will take walking, your head off. If you're swimming on the bottom, like, you know, you're walking, Snapping turtle sees it, you're gonna lose a toe. Yeah. And I, I like my toes. <laughs> Still, <laughs> alligator, you know, it's a sport. You can wrestle them. It's not that hard. One character trait of your grandpa that I've really noticed is that everything I do is wrong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everything always wrong? Because it's not his way. <laughs> and, is, and, and tell me, honestly, he's not listening. Is his way always right? No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> definitely not. I've got stuck in the river a couple of times <laughs> because of his way. <laughs> Colbert wants in on the fun, so it's time for a shooting competition. That looked, uh, got that it. looked pretty good to me. You call it a hit. Yeah. Uh, he exaggerates like his grandpa a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he got, I would call very... Oh, but you don't exaggerate. Well, I take a true story and dress it up to make it prettier. <laughs> I got a shot of you, grandpa. Oh, um, excellent. Really? On a good day, I'm even better. There's a rumor that I missed one time, but you know how rumors go. Yeah. Oh, miles away. <laughs> <laughs> miles away. Oh, the sights are adjusted wrong. No. <laughs> you moved the sight up. I'd say that was a direct that was a hit. hit. That was a hit. I, wow. That was a hit. Don't you look so surprised. <laughs> I mean, accidents do happen. <laughs> <laughs> Accidents, you know, if you shoot enough shots, you're going to hit something. <laughs> oh, Colbert. It's really, it's really nice. It's a totally different Colbert with his grandkids because it's, it's seeing a totally different side to him. Um, it's kind of the warm, cuddly, fuzzy side. You can see how he's so excited to have them both here and they're both so happy to be here. And actually, it really, it suddenly, this is now kind of taking me back to my childhood because I went to visit my grandpa and he lived in a little log cabin on the side of a lake. It wasn't in a swamp, but I can see I totally relate and I remember that excitement of, of idolizing my grandpa as well. After just one day, the boys have to return home to go back to school. So back to the city, boys. Yeah. yeah. Sad? Uh, just yes. a little bit. And I leave Colbert to take them back to the airport and say his goodbyes. He clearly loves their company and it must be hard to see them go. 
Back in Colbert's homestead, it's my last day too, and I won't miss these mozzies. It's taken me all week, but I've finally plucked up the courage to take a dip and brave whatever lurks beneath the swampy waters. Colbert's back just in time to join in, but as usual, he takes the chance to upstage me. You're a braver man than me, Colbert. Oh, <laughs> Sure, there's no alligators in here. What? What was that? Something just touched my foot. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. <laughs> Woo. I'm pleased to have some company in these dangerous waters, but I'm just not sure where to look. It's just a bit disconcerting, not knowing what's in this water. Well, I think it's only because I know alligators do live around here. Oh, they do. They come by, but if you make a lot of racket, they usually swim off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought about having a diving board and putting a caption on there. Yeah. Something funny. It's quite a jacuzzi, isn't it? So it's very nice, Colbert. <laughs> My visit has come to an end, and I prepare to leave Colbert alone in his wilderness. Swamp living is not for me, I'll tell you that. It just feels quite dirty here, everything about it. And each to their own. It's great that people like Colbert sees an environment like this and, and use it and he'll always have some water and he'll always have something to eat even if it's a toad or a frog you can see that uh, would i do it no way this is it's just not my place i love dipping in and it's been a great experience in terms of weirdness i think this ha this this has to be a highlight won't forget this one in a hurry are you going to miss me, Colbert? What? Am I going to miss you? Were you There's too much delay there with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. Bring, come back sometime when you got free time. Uh, bring your family. I'll do that. Here, give me a hug. Come Listen, back, it's been amazing. It really has been amazing. You're you amazing, too. Ah. Uh, it's fun having you around. I like good company like you. Somebody that can paddle. Yeah, I can paddle. That's, like a, that's a compliment. You've given me a compliment. I'm going home with a compliment. I've had worse paddlers. Have you? <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> Listen, keep up all the good work. Don't get up to too much naughtiness here. Oh, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to bring my wife anywhere near you. <laughs> that's your call, all right? <laughs> Bye, Colbert. Bye. How's my paddling? Almost as good as mine. Next time, I'm in the Indian Himalayas, living with an ex-fighter pilot who turned his back on high society for a simple life in the mountains. I mean, I'm unsuitable. I can't live in an organized society. How he's fought to protect his wilderness. They're running. Against all odds. What did you say? Run, you bastard. <laughs> 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 <laughs>